Thank you so, so much for tuning in once again to the Africa Sports Consultancy Weekly Live. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what we do. We seek out the best of the best, and we do that week in, week out. And tonight, once again, it's no different. And tonight, we have one of Bulawayo, Zimbabwe's finest cricketers. And tonight, we are joined by John Nyumbu. John, how are you doing? How's it, Kodo? Yeah, happy birthday, mate. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't forget. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it, it's not supposed to be my birthday chat, but thank you very much, Johnny. I've been overwhelmed by messages and um, yeah, lots of messages, lots of phone calls. And, you know, it's nice to be 21. Ah, you know the deal, mate. 21, forever 21. I'm 16, by the way. <laughs> Johnny, fantastic. Th thanks. Thanks for coming on and for chatting to us. You know, we really appreciate your time and we know how busy schedules um, of guys of your caliber can be. No, thanks very much for having me. It's, uh, it's an honor to be on this platform. I've been following it quite a bit and uh, I actually like what you what you guys are doing. And it's uh, for me to see someone that I've seen growing up, you know, I've played with, he's captained me and to see you doing things of this magnitude, you know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's really a blessing for me, yeah? Johnny, what did you like? A Ferrari, a Lamborghini? What is it that you like? <laughs> <laughs> You're just too kind. Man. Just too kind. <laughs> Look, fantastic, Johnny. The time goes really, really quickly. It, it it flies through, and you know, there's so much that I certainly want to hear from you, and I'm sure the our viewers have so much they also want to hear from you. You know, it's John Yumbu, who's Johnny, and you know, you. <laughs> when we start this conversation, Johnny, you're someone who making your first class debut. I think it's 2004, and today we're at 2021. Did you think we'd be having this conversation today? Ah, uh, mate, you know, you're just taking me down back memory lane, you know. I remember making my first class day, be playing with the likes of its streak. And uh, for me to be able to be saying I'm still playing cricket uh, year 2021 is, you know, you, you don't take things like that for granted. Uh, you know, it's been so much hard work that has been put into everything. But it is what it is. Uh, I'm still playing at the age of 35, enjoying every little bit of it, mate, yeah? You say 35, but I'll just round that off to about 36 because you're nearly there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, you know, you, you you say, you know, we hear a lot of people come out and say, you know, it's, it's all the hard work I've put in. But, you know, what has gotten you this far? I know, it's, I know you mentioned hard work, but how could you break it down for us? God, well, you, you've been in, in the system that we're in now, you know, you know what it takes, you know, it takes uh, you putting in the hours with your skill. It takes uh, a whole lot of work ethic, it takes a lot of sacrifice. You know, there are certain things that you have to sacrifice, you know, to be a, a sportsman, not only in Zimbabwe, but I think everywhere else in the world, you know. Uh, but above all, I think for me, there are two pillars uh, that have actually strengthened me from the time I started playing to where I am now. One is my family, you know my immediate family, my wife and, and, and my kids, and then my parents and all, but also the God factor in it all, mate, because I, I think without God and without his favor, without his guidance in everything, we cannot achieve uh, what, what we achieve. So I think those are the two main things that have, uh, that have actually helped and, and, and molded me to be the person that I am today. Wow, Johnny, that's that's absolutely amazing. And you know, you 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 say that um, professional cricketer John Nyumbu today, but at one point it could have been professional footballer. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I I think I get that a lot. You know, from the guys that knew me when uh, when we were growing up. You know, so to them it's just like a wow, you're playing cricket now, you're playing for Zim now. But we thought you're going to play for Highlanders. We thought you're going to do this, but you know, life deals you certain cards that um, uh, you, you don't anticipate. And to be honest, I never thought I would play cricket, but chance, you know, uh, made it happen. You know, I was I was playing cricket at Milton High School, social cricketer, you know, and um, our team, our under-16 team, didn't have enough players. So 
I just used to, used to tag along with some friends. And, uh, you know, it was towards the end of the season when we're playing against MCC and MCC and the team, I think uh, they needed about 10 or 15 runs uh, with five wickets in hand. And uh, our captain then like, I made, you've been standing at slip the whole time, the whole season. Why not just roll your fingers and and then see what 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 you can do? And and luckily enough, I managed to get five wickets in that game. And that game, I think, is the turning point of me realizing that geez, I can actually play cricket. But I still didn't stop playing football because I think I played football up until upper six at uh, at Milton High School. And uh, yeah, I, I had great company in our teams, and it was also a nice thing to do. You know, so cricket ended up being the winner. <laughs> Indeed, Johnny, indeed. And you, you're talking about a Fifer the first time you ever bowled. I'm going to come back to that in a minute uh, because there's a lot more you need to tell us about this Fifer on debut thing. But now you've obviously got soccer on one side, you've got cricket on the other side. What made you decide to go cricket? I think because uh, I stayed in suburbs, that was like uh, a five minute walk to Milton High School. So for me to actually leave there and maybe let's say go to Barberfield Stadium where the Highlanders juniors were practicing and uh, Machobane when Zimbabwe Saints was practicing. It was a long walk for me, but BAC was closer. <laughs> so I ended up going to BAC, still taking along with the same friends that enticed me to play uh, cricket at, uh, at high school. So that's how, it, uh, that's how it ended, you know, for me. But I'm still an avid football follower. I'm still an avid football player. So I, I reckon I am a footballer who plays cricket. <laughs> oh, Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. You know what? If your football skills are anything like the team you support, they can't be that good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you had to go there. <laughs> you had to go there, yeah, man. But it is what it is. United, we stand and... Uh, Today we're playing you guys, so I know after this, it's going to be a bit of rivalry between the two of us. Oh, fantastic. For, ladies and gentlemen, for those who just joined us, we're chatting to John Nyumbu, Zimbabwe international cricketer. And as, as you've just heard, what, what a journey he's been on. Someone who could have ended up playing professional football, but there he is playing cricket. And now, Johnny, you, you've said you've gone the cricket route, and I hate this question, but I have to ask it. Are there any regrets? In life, there are never any regrets because you you take what you've got, you know. And many people say, why didn't you play soccer? But maybe I would have played soccer and wouldn't have made it. The perseverance that I, I had to endure in cricket is one that makes me sit back at the end of the day and say, I still made a good choice. I've played uh, with uh, different teammates, I've played with legends of the game, you know, I've managed to tour certain countries, you know, so there are all these things that you, you look back at and say, okay, soccer, I didn't, but cricket, it is what it is. This is where I'm playing, this is what I've achieved. And you should always be grateful in life for even the littlest thing that you've got. Johnny, talking about patience and being grateful. Now, Johnny, you started your career in 2004. You've got a thing for round numbers. Now, in 10 years' time, you make your test debut. Now, talk me through that moment. Matt, that for me, that I believe is the greatest sporting achievement of my life, uh, irregardless of the performance. But the fact that I got to don uh, the baggy green for Zimbabwe and represent my country, represent 15 uh, million Zimbabweans on the field of battle in the, in the cricketing arena for me is just you know the the, the, the highlight of, of my career and uh, it took long I almost gave up it's, it's, it's weird how I'm saying this to you because through that journey you've been there <laughs> so for me it's not like an interview it's just like a refresher thing where I almost gave up like the year before I actually made the breakthrough because I started coaching at a certain academy. And I thought, okay, 10 years into the game, I might not be able to, <laughs> to, 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 to achieve what I wanted to. But then a certain guy, an umpire called Langton Rosere, just said, Johnny, just do this for me. Just, you know, one more season. And if it doesn't happen, you can quit. 
you know, and then I'm like, what's this guy saying, you know, but he managed to convince me to play another season. And fortunately enough, that was the season that I was top wicket taker in the Logan Cup joined with Donald Chiripano. And funny enough, both of us made our test debuts uh, in that South Africa series. Now, I don't know if I should even ask you this, but what do you remember from that day? From the day? Yeah, Gee. the day you made your debut. Oof. To be honest, I remember getting my baggy green cap from the then chairman, uh, Mr. Manasse. And after that, just there was just a blur. You know, it's like time just goes a bit fast. And I remember taking my first wicket and I remember thinking, ah, is this me? You know, because you still won't be able to believe if it's you, if you are there. And uh, funny enough, I've never said this to anyone, but secretly in my heart, I was singing the South African national anthem just because I had been watching them for so long and it's already ingrained in you that, geez, Spagamisa, ni whatever it is, you know, and then and, 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 and the South African version. So just, you know, these things just happen and you can't control them and you can't control the emotion. And also, I remember saying to Fusi and Hamilton when I had taken three weeks that I've got a chance of taking a five. That when, that's when it dawned on me that I've got an opportunity to, to, to make history. And it happened, grateful, you know, all oh, glory to God, mate, because that's far he had taken me and that's far he's still taking me, man. Uh, you say he's still taking you. So is, is there any risk of seeing you in, in the white and the baggy green again? Mate, there's a professional sports person, even if you're 80 years old and you're still playing professionally, you still hope to get that call up because while it's just still playing, you still believe that uh, you can still play at the next level. So now at, at 36, I've rounded you off to 36 because you're nearly there anyway. At 36, <laughs> you walk out of the Zimbabwean domestic one day tro uh, championship as the top wicket taker. You walk out of the Logan Cup as the second highest wicket taker. And then you go to the 2020s and then you're bowler of the tournament. How has all that come together in one season? Mate, uh, the lockdown, uh, I'll call it Project Lockdown, because during the lockdown, the, just before that, I gained a bit of weight, and uh, I endeavoured to cut down on my, on my weight. You know, what I did was, uh, when because I got a lot of friends who play in the Premier League, so when they were also doing their lockdown work and playing these little mini games, I would actually wake up in the morning because the games are always at six o'clock in the morning. I'd actually wake up in the morning. I bought um, a plastic bin bag that I wore inside uh, my, 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 my training stuff. And then I'll go and play soccer. I think I'll play soccer on average a week, about four times a week. High intense, you know, just trying to push myself with these with this guys, these professionals. And I shared a bit of weight. Happy with that. Goal number one done. And then... Just before we started, I would go to BAC and I would work with Fleming Como. I'll work with uh, Slim, you know, Slim. I'll work with Pollock on what I wanted to achieve during the season. And uh, lucky enough, all that little bit of hard work that I put in during that project lockdown uh, amounted to to the success that I had in the in the domestic setup. And it all goes to show that with hard work, with perseverance. Uh, you can never go wrong. I was a bit lucky with some of the wickets. You know, you create your own luck. And I believe the hard work that I put in enabled me to be in a position of luck in, 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 in the games. And uh, yeah, pretty happy with, uh, with the outcome of the season. Absolutely fantastic, Johnny. And I take off my hat to you with, with the hard work you put in. And tell you what, we, having watched the Zimbabwe-Pakistan Test Series, we could have used a lot of your luck. And, you know, it's one of those things. And hopefully in the near future, we'll be seeing you back in those colors. And I can see just behind you there, we've got Nyumbu 16. Hopefully we can be seeing that soon enough. But you mentioned something to me there that you're a professional cricketer in Zim, but here you are, you're playing professional football. And if we go back a couple of years, we had Tendai Chatara break his leg playing football in, in Zim. And now it goes on to make me ask the question, 
being a um, professional athlete in Zim, how has that been for you? Yeah, man, you know, it's got its challenges, you know, and um, I can say it hasn't been as easy as people think because of the general misconception, like in the town or so when you walk around in the streets, people see a cricketer, they think, oh, they're the most moneyed person in the country. But with the economy and everything that has been going around, it has always hit, it has also hit the pocket of, uh, of the cricket. So it's also just up to you as, a, as an individual to, to say, this is what I've got. I've got lemons or I've got oranges or I've got apples. Let me make my own, let me make my own juice and, 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 and make the most out of it. Because at the end of the day, uh, you can have all the money you want, you can have everything you want, but if you're not enjoying what you're doing, it's, uh, it's, 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 all, it's, all, it's all futile. So I think the enjoyment part of it also enabled me. And the competitive nature of, 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 of the guys that we play against, you know, when we're playing against mountaineers, when we're playing against eagles, just that material pride that we've got, you know, not wanting to lose to those guys, not wanting to give anything away, you know, also pushes you to actually try and work as hard as you can and making sure that, excuse me, you do well for your team, you do well for yourself, and above all, you do well for your respective provinces and the country in general. No, certainly, Johnny, and really, you know, when you say that, it goes to show why, you know, your test debut meant so much to you, and you mentioned having 15 million Zimbabweans that you're going out to represent, and look, it must be challenging, and it must come with its own difficulties, which you have mentioned, and, you know, before we jump along, ladies and gentlemen, we are, um, again, th that time is running away from us, so if you have any questions you'd like to ask John, this is your opportunity, please type them in the chat, be it in the Zoom chat, or be it on in the comment section, that that would absolutely be brilliant, please. And now, John, like I said, you 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 mentioned this, and yes, you want to go out and represent your country, but again, you have a family, you have a wife, you have children to look to, to look after. So all those challenges put together, for me, I always take my hat off to Zimbabwean athletes who go out and perform at their best, given all these background challenges that no one seems to think. But in, in saying that, what has been your biggest challenge throughout your career? My biggest challenge throughout my career is um, myself. That's what I say, myself. Because when I look into the mirror and I see that John, I want to make sure that that John is the best model of the John Newbo that it can be. So it entails me going to the gym, it entails me working out on my fitness, it entails me uh, watching what I eat, it entails me looking to better myself each and every day and making sure that my family is well taken care of. I've been fortunate that uh, I've had a supportive wife, you know, uh, through even the bad times when I wasn't uh, as, as, as much of a contracted player as I wanted to be in terms of remuneration, she always managed... Uh, to bring out the best in me, to tell me that there'll be better days and, uh, and everything. But in saying that, to answer your question, the financial aspect of everything as a professional sports person in Zim is always a challenge. You know, you always want to ensure that you are well catered for financially, not only when you're playing, but also post, uh, post career when you've retired, you know, you always want to make sure that your kids uh, are well catered for in terms of school fees, in terms of uh, clothes, even your rentals and everything. So I think the financial part of it has, has been the biggest challenge for me. And also I, 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 I can attest to this for all the other uh, sportsmen and in Zimbabwe. But we believe that we're doing what we like. We're getting paid to do what we like and there are always uh, better days to come in the future. Wow, Johnny, you, you, you threw me off course. But, <laughs> and you just saying that, and I, you know, I laugh, but in you just saying that, that just hit a string in my heart to say, going back to thinking about why, you know, I'm involved with what I'm involved with now and the amazing team I have behind me who are trying to push this narrative to ensure that these challenges you talk about, these financial challenges and these challenges within your career be it post or prior to you, your playing days being over, 
there has to be a plan. There has to be that plan B. There has to be that place where we know that Johnny is done and there's something for him in the future, which, you know, you've rightfully pointed out to be a challenge that does exist. And, you know, before I jump into the, into all of the questions, for me, it's, I look at you and it's like, Johnny, you're almost 36. You're doing well at your cricket, and I'm glad, and I'm hoping that you can defy the narrative and go on to play till you're 40 and be the Gigi Buffon of Zimbabwean <laughs> cricket. But for you at 36, where, where, where's your headspace at? Yeah, I think for me, uh, I love coaching. I love working, especially with the younger guys. So I need to make sure that by the time I say I'm done with playing, I've put myself in line to be a good coach. So, which means by getting my coaching badges and uh, making sure that I get as much literature as possible in the game and uh, putting myself in a line where I'm able to be employed as a coach anywhere I go in the world, be it in Zimbabwe, be it abroad. So the onus is on me now to be able to, 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 to put myself in that line of work. And uh, another thing that I enjoy is I enjoy commentary because, you know, I like talking a lot. So that's the only other place where I can actually use my, 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 my strength. So I enjoy commentary. So for me, it's coaching and, uh, and commentary. And uh, I'm hoping that within the next couple of years, I'll have, uh, I'll have done well for myself to align myself in those two directions. Look, all the best to you, Johnny. And you are someone who are, a lot of young people will definitely be looking up to. And look, I could keep going, but I'm just looking here in the, in the, in the chat and I see, I, I like this question actually from Andy Finlin. It's brilliant. Uh, he says, talking of diet, what is your guilty pleasure food-wise? <laughs> like I said, it's, 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 it's weird how I'm talking to you about this. You know, I like my food, mate. And that's one of the toughest things that I've had to do to cut down on on a little bit, but uh, I like the sweet stuff. So I like the cakes, you know, I like the muffins and also that's, 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 that's my, my, my guilty pleasure. That, that's my vice, mate. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm looking, I'm looking through the chat as well and I can see there's, there's a few comments there and one that's quite a sweet one is hats off to the wife. Um, and you know, that that's absolutely brilliant to, to have someone who's there supporting you throughout and, you know, you, you, you can't buy that. Um, I'm just waiting again. I, I'm going to look over here in the questions, but one I had to ask you myself is your biggest wicket. <laughs> yeah. AB was my biggest wicket, mate. AB was my biggest wicket because I remember at the time we were playing against them, he was bullying everyone around. He had come from Sri Lanka, had scored runs. And prior to that, he had scored runs in South Africa. And, uh, like I said, I remember when they asked me this question uh, at the post-match thingy, they said, why? So I said, for me to bowl to the best batter in the world was an honor. But for me to actually get him out was an even uh, bigger honor. So yeah, AB for me was, was, was and still is my biggest wicket, yeah. Wow, A.B. de Villiers. Uh, and I'm sure I, I can just hear you in the background checking your pockets to make sure that A.B. is still there and still okay. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to go over to the next question. Yeah, we've got Francis who's asked the question. Uh, I need to just pull it back up here. He says, John, well done on such a remarkable career. You're an inspiration to us all. That's off to you, Johnny. He says, what is your favorite country to tour or play cricket in and why? Brilliant question. Uh, I, I haven't toured many countries, you know. I've only been to Bangladesh and I've been to India. But I enjoyed um, my six months overseas uh, in 2019 when I played for Grantham Cricket Club in the Lincolnshire League. Uh, for me, that, that, takes, that takes the cup, you know. So if I'm hearing you correctly, you're saying you love playing cricket in the UK in yeah. a drizzly, cold weather. Funny enough, when I was there, it wasn't really that cold. It was only cold maybe for the first couple of weeks. But then after that, I think they recorded the, their hottest summer. So it was like uh, home away from home. And uh, 
I got to go to Manchester at Old Trafford, so that just topped it all up. <laughs> For anyone who's watching out there, Johnny is an avid Manchester United supporter, so no surprise, he had to throw them in there somewhere. <laughs> now, Johnny, I, I, I'm looking here again, an, another question. So, obviously, you've grown up also watching cricket and aspiring to be like other people. Who was your role model growing up? To be honest, I didn't aspire to be any one of the internationals because, as, like I said, as I was growing up, I wasn't really a cricket person. But the person who really brought the best out of me, who really inspired me, was Kip Dabengwa. He coached me when I was young, and uh, I learned a lot from him. And also the honor of playing with him for all those years, for me, was the best I think I can get out of my career. And even up to now, you know, he still throws in a word, encouragement, he watches all my games. And for me to have a guy like that, who's done everything in the, in the, in, in the local and, 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 and even played for Zimbabwe, watching me and inspiring me even up to now is still a blessing, man. You had to throw it in there. Your best friend, Keith Davengwa. Um, absolutely brilliant. You know, you know, he's someone who's done well for the country. And I'm definitely hoping to see if I can get him to chat to us because he's someone who's gone through the whole way and continues to inspire, like you've rightfully said. Johnny, we are running out of time. And I'll see if I can squeeze in one more question from the chat. But there's one question that I have to ask you. And it would be coming from Blau Isle and having come up from where you've come from, what would your advice be for any aspiring young athletes, any young boys and girls who, who are going to watch this? The, the old cliche, hard work pays, you know? And uh, in hard work, it doesn't mean just working hard, but it means working hard and doing the right things. So for the young people that, I'm, that are watching this, I encourage you to keep working hard, be disciplined. And like I said, for me, the God factor, uh, 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 helped a lot in, 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 in shaping what I am today. So I believe those are the three things, hard work, discipline, and God. Amazing. And you, you, you've nailed it there, hard work, discipline, and God. And if there's any young people watching this, then you know where to go. You know where to start from with Johnny. Now, now Johnny, you, you're someone who... I'm looking over at the, at the questions and we won't be able to get through another one because we've got literally one minute left. Um, but you're someone who takes pride in, in, in their batting, like Chris and Paul, I had Chris and Paul here before. So I'll, I'll have to ask you, what's your most memorable batting inning? Oof, my most memorable batting inning was um, when we played against Eagles uh, and Harare and Brian Vittori was just running in and bombing everyone. I managed to evade him the way that I know how, just fall over the place and make sure I don't get hit. And I managed to score a 50 in that game. And uh, to lead up to that, I got five wickets in the same game. So I think that was the most memorable inning for me. Fantastic. And um, look, you scoring a 50, you must be immensely proud of that. Um, I I'm just glad you went like Chris and told me about your 100, which he just doesn't stop talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, look, Johnny, fantastic. Like you said, it's been brilliant talking to you. It's nice and easy. And I know the viewers at home really appreciate you taking your time and coming out, chatting to us. And you know what? Thank you so, so much, Johnny. No, thanks very much, uh, ma'am. Uh, I'm happy that you guys are doing this. And I pray that God elevates this company to greater, to greater heights because it's not for you. It's for the next generation of sports uh, of sports people in Zimbabwe, in Africa, and hopefully abroad, that will that will use you wisely and they'll get the best out of it. So good luck in all your endeavors, mate. And thank you very much for having me on your show. Cheers for that, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching. You heard it from Johnny and Johnny Nyumbu, and as Johnny mentioned, as Africa Sports Consultancy, we are striving to ensure that young African athletes, be it current or those post playing have something beyond their career. And you can visit us at www.africasportsconsultancy.com. So because today is my birthday, I will not be signing out in my usual way. Johnny, you would be jealous because I've got a cake here um, that I'm going to be enjoying. <laughs> so one of your guilty pleasures. And, you know, like you said, it, it, it's nice to have those people who love and care for you and can do this for you. So shout out to Steph. Um, and 
Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, next week, same place, same time, do join us and we will be chatting to another fantastic guest. But for now, take care of yourselves and keep sanitizing.